Once upon a time, there was a little girl. This little girl really wanted to paint her nails. So, naturally, this little girl went into her mom's walk-in closet to snoop around and look for nail polish. This little girl was me. As I dug past the piles and piles of my mom's clothes and jewelry, I finally found the box that I was looking for. But there was another box blocking it. As I looked a little closer at this second, smaller box, I noticed that it said, in large, fancy gold lettering, single malt scotch whiskey. <laughs> now, initially, I was very confused because my mom doesn't really like to drink alcohol that much. But then, my confusion slowly started to turn into excitement. In my mind, I was thinking, oh my god, my mom is so cool. <laughs> she has a secret stash of whiskey hidden in her walk-in closet. She really does have a life. In my excitement, I grabbed the box and sprinted across the house, slamming it down on the kitchen counter next to where my mom was sitting. Putting on my best nine-year-old interrogation face, I puffed out my chest, looked her dead in the eye, and demanded that she tell me why on earth this box was in her closet. My mom, as calm as ever, looked at me with the most blank expression on her face, and slowly started to open the box. So you see, in my excitement-induced haze, I never actually opened the box to see what was inside. So when <laughs> my mom opened it, instead of a golden bottle of whiskey like I was expecting, was just a bunch of bracelets and jewelry. Disappointment shot through me like an arrow straight through my heart. Recently, one of my aunts came to visit my family after losing a close family member. I wanted to cheer her up, so I told her this story. As she heard what was inside the box, she laughed and laughed, and wiping her eyes, thanked me for telling her the story. Later that night, I went to bed in pure amazement that simply telling my aunt a funny story was able to cheer her up so quickly and so effectively. This led me to wonder, what exactly is laughter? And what does it do in our brains that allows us to make us so happy, even when we are sad? Well, first I thought about what laughter is to me. I am a part of my school's improv comedy team, so laughter already plays a large role in my life. Improv comedy is the form of unscripted comedy that is made up completely on the spot, much like seen in the popular TV show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? So to me, laughter is a way for me to de-stress, to have fun, and to connect with my community through improv shows and performances. But I realize that not everybody has the opportunity to go to improv practice two times a week, and that you might leave you laughter a little bit differently than I do. You might think of laughter as something that occurs once in a blue moon due to busy lifestyles, children, or work. Or that laughter only occurs when you're with certain people or if you're in a certain place. But the truth is, humans don't need to do much to laugh. In fact, the easiest way to laugh is to be around a large group of people. According to CNN, humans are actually 30 times more likely to laugh when they're in a group setting. It's why some popular TV shows, like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Full House, often use laugh tracks, because people feel more comfortable laughing with others around them. As a matter of fact, every single human being on the Earth has the ability to laugh. From babies to 100-year-old men, from language to language, from the seeing to the blind, and from the deaf to the hearing. Everyone laughs. So, by now you must be wondering, why on earth is laughter so universal? And why do humans laugh? But most importantly, what on earth is laughter? Well, laughter wasn't always what we know it to be now. 
Right off the bat, you might think of a good chuckle at your coworker's joke, or a muffled giggle as you see a kid fall flat on his face. But did you know that laughter was actually a way for monkeys to bond with each other? The sound of laughter itself likely evolved from deep breathing patterns that occurred when primates would play with one another, and was even used to signal safety within their group. Laughter is directly tied to how we feel, and we only laugh when aroused in a positive, happy way, just like how we cry when we are sad or how we shout when we are angry. The English actor and comedian John Cleese perfectly described the function of laughter in this quote. Laughter connects you with people. It's almost impossible to maintain any kind of distance or any sense of social hierarchy when you're simply howling with laughter. While laughter may have changed over the years to keep up with human evolution, some things have remained the same. Laughter brings people together, strengthens social bonds, and even reduces stress. So, now that we know where laughter comes from. Let's talk about why humans laugh. There's been much controversy over the years on what exactly causes laughter, but scientists and researchers alike have narrowed it down to just three simple theories. The first theory, called the superiority theory, states that people reflect on their superiority by laughing at the misfortunes of others. For example, last semester. My physics teacher assigned my class a project to build a bridge that could hold up 40 pounds of weight made entirely out of pasta. Naturally, because my best friend was my partner, we waited until the last possible weekend to begin building our bridge. Just as I arrived home after four grueling hours of hard work, I get a call from her saying that her grandpa. Who, by the way, is a Harvard engineer, sat on our pasta bridge and broke it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I caught all of you guys laughing at the misfortunes of lowly high school students. <laughs> not cool, not cool. But the second theory of why we laugh is called the relief theory, the, or the incongruity theory. This theory states that laughter is a reaction to the violation of expectations, nonsense, unexpected events, or irrelevant events. For example, if I just started speaking like Mort from Madagascar, <clears throat> I love you, King Julian. Can I kiss your feet, King Julian? I'd say that you all would find that pretty funny. I bet none of you expected to hear an accurate imitation of Mort during a TEDx talk. And the last and the final theory of why we laugh is called the relief theory. This theory states that laughter is a way for us to release negative tension that is no longer needed in the body, especially if the laughter is about taboo topics such as death or sex. This theory explains why some people. Especially preteen boys find poop jokes so funny. <laughs> Therefore, laughter releases us from the rigidity and the complexity of our daily lives. We suspend our familiar rational concerns that lead us to negative emotions, and instead allow ourselves to enjoy the humor of the moment. So, when we do laugh in these situations. What is going on inside of our brains that makes us feel so good? Well, the process begins in the frontal lobe of our brains, located just behind the forehead. This is where the brain decides if something is funny or not, and is where your brain decided that my Mort voice was funny. Once something is determined funny, the limbic system kicks in, and this is the part of our brain that controls feelings like pleasure and fear. Once something is determined pleasurable, the limbic system activates the motor cortex, which contracts and releases the lungs to create the ha 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 sound we have all come to recognize as laughter. But perhaps the most magical part about this process is when the brain releases endorphins, chemicals that create positive emotions in the entire body and brain. Over time. The production of endorphins and the act of laughter itself actually has the ability to suppress cortisol, 
the hormone that creates stress. A well-timed joke has the ability to cut tension between two people, to prevent aggressive reactions, and even calm down two very stressed teenage girls trying to fix a broken pasta bridge the night before it's due. Laughter is the basis for all human connection. Laughter bridges every single human being to one another, from an infant's first breath to an old man's last. All throughout life, we turn to laughter as a means of comfort and joy. From congregating to watch SNL, to listening to your dad's stupid jokes, or to watching YouTube videos of epic fails, laughter brings people small sips of happiness every single day. So, when you feel like all hope is lost, or even if you just need to pick me up, turn to methods that will bring you a simple but impactful laugh. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.